Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey, we got Metro in the house. Can you make some noise for them too? What is up? What is up? I'm glad you're here. A live stream as well. Uh, hey, thanks uh, so much for having this moment, uh, uh, coming together and just uh, spending some time, uh, uh, in one sense, stopping to acknowledge what's going on in, uh, in our world, in our country. And so, so glad, you, Metro, you guys did the same thing. It's important that we come together. It's important, honestly, that we all come together in moments like this. You know, it's so hard for me because I, 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 wanna ha I, I had a game plan of what I wanted to talk about, and then I'm like, okay, what should I do? And, and so I'm in this moment of like, I want to... I don't want to make this, uh, uh, I, I want to have the conversation that I really believe that we want, uh, that we need to have. And so this morning I want to continue, I want to start uh, our uh, series called Reclaim. And uh, it's really reclaiming uh, the, the things that we've maybe given up on. And um, I want to start off by just uh, telling you, like, I, uh, I went, I went to, um, uh, I went to the doctor. Anybody, anybody love the doctor? Anybody a doctor? How many of you like giving blood? Anybody like love giving blood? Yeah, really? Okay, all right, whatever. Not taking blood, giving blood. Okay, uh, but we've got vampires in the house. No, 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 we don't, we don't, we don't. Uh, but yeah, so I gave, uh, gave blood. Uh, not, I didn't give blood. I, I, I didn't give blood. I had, they took it from me, for number one. They took it from me. Okay, okay. And uh, I don't use, so I, Decided to give blood like a long time ago in my, in my college years, and uh, I passed out, okay? So then they were like, you cannot give blood, okay? That was someone laughing too much, uh, okay? Uh, and so I, I don't give blood, and, but this time I had to take, it was doing blood work, and so I was sitting there, she's like, are you good? And I was like, hey, listen, so I, I sometimes pass out when I give blood, but this is good. And she's like, okay, that's fine. And she was like, I'll just take some blood out, and then I'm like, oh, and then she took out nine vials of blood. And, and then I was like, oh, those are nine. And she's like, are you good? I'm like, I'm good. I was sitting on the chair. I'm like, I'm good. She's like, you good? I'm good. I'm good. Are you good? I'm good. And she put the thing on there and the bandage and all that. And she's good? You're good? And I, and I went, you know what? I, I'm done. I'm gone. I'm gone. Next thing I know, uh, my eyes are like going through like my, my I, I'm, I hear voices. Sir, what is your name? What is your name, sir? And I'm like, Naeem? <laughs> Naeem? Fazel? Fazel is my last name. Do you know where you are? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Can you open your eyes? Nope. I cannot open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So that led to my eyes finally opening up to people like, you know, like, oh God, oh God, is he going to be okay? Uh, to me, uh, being put in another room, you know, sir, you lie down here, okay? <laughs> And then I lie down too, uh, too long, and they're like, we need the room. Can you stand up? <laughs> could you, seriously, could you leave? Just sit, in the, just sit outside. Sit in the lobby. I was like, okay, got it. I got this. I got this. Sat there. They're like, so are you okay? I don't know how many hours had passed. Uh, and then I was like, uh, you know what? I think I'm, I think I need, I think I'm going to throw up. And so <laughs> my day just continued. It just kept on happening. <laughs> Then I was like, I went through up, that was great, and then came back, finally, three, four hours later, I don't know what, I don't know, 16 hours later, I'm good, I'm good, I'm fine, and uh, I got to go back tomorrow and get more blood, and get more blood work. So, what, 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 what in the world, I'm just going to take a vote, who says I should go back? Shut up, okay, you shut up, sir, okay? No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I am going to go back, I got to go back. We got to make this happen, all right? We got to make this happen. I got this. You guys are with me? Woo! Gonna make this. You know what was terrible about the whole experience, though, is that I was like, I was in denial that I'm that guy that passes out, and now there's no doubt. Now there's no doubt. Because I think when I w go, came to consciousness, there was someone with a camera. I think there was someone with the camera taking a picture. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But um, I, I just was like, oh, man, I'm this guy. I'm this guy. I do this. So, th so tomorrow when I go, I'm going to go, hey, so I'm this guy. I will pass out. You know, just put me down, whatever you got to do, uh, and then take blood, whatever, okay? Because I am that guy. And I, and I want to start this conversation about reclaiming some of the dreams and purposes and uh, the goals, the, the vision that we've had uh, with this question of, uh, have you ever thought, like, oh, you know what, this is, this is who I am now. This is who I am. Because I think it starts off like that. Like it starts off with us like stopping and going, you know what? Uh, I look at my life, I look at the 
my accomplishments or the lack of accomplishments, and I think, wow, this is, this is, this is my life now. Are you there? Like, are you like, you know what? This is who I am now. This is, this is what I've become. I, I've, I've, I've had moments like that. I don't know if you have. Maybe you're in that moment like, this is my life. This is the girl I am. This is, the, the, uh, this is my season. This is who I am. This is as good as it gets. This is, this, this is what I have become. And I, I remember actually uh, journaling, uh, and I do journal. That's a great thing. Um, and i like, dear diary. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. But I, I just put down, you know, what have I, who have I become? And I stopped, and I think God just started speaking to me. Uh, number one, with this big idea that there, no condition is permanent. Did you know that? No condition, no condition that we know of is ever permanent. Regardless how bad the, your condition is or how good your condition is, it's never permanent. No, so when you, we, we make a statement like, hey, what have I become? That's really not accurate. I mean, life makes you want to do that. Uh, circumstances want you to do that. Uh, disappointments will make you want to say that. But when, when you have a thought like, look what I have become, that is not a true statement. Because you're always becoming. You're, it's, 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 the, the big question is, who are you becoming? And for some of us, because we have stopped in our tracks, because we have allowed disappointment or uh, uh, a critical, uh, a critical voice in our lives, because we've allowed despair, because we've allowed grief to set in and just show up, and not just show up, but just stay in us, we've just forfeited all the things, all the dreams, ideas, goals, visions, um, in our lives, and so this conversation is about reclaiming, taking back uh, the things that we were called to do, the promises of God, the promises uh, of, of even ourselves that we made to ourselves that we want to do, uh, and we want to take back the resolutions that we start off the year with, like, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and now we're four or five months, five months away from the end of this year, 2020 is coming. And so this is a big question. Hey, have you actually gone after the things that you've gone after, you wanted to go after? Have you done those, or have you allowed disappointment? Have you allowed certain things to just take over your life? So this three-week series is, is about reclaiming that. What does it look like to come, go back and go, okay, no condition is permanent. I'm not going to say this is who I've become. No, I'm becoming this person, but what, what do I need to do to go Go back and get back and take back the passion, the desire, the, the faith that I used to have, or the, the, the confidence I used to have. What will it take? And where are you in this conversation? And so what I want to do is I want to take you through a passage, uh, an Old Testament passage of a story of a guy named Gideon. And he is, he's a guy that, um, that, that um, uh, he, he's known for a lot of things, uh, but he was a judge in the time of uh, the Jewish uh, history where judges were like leading people. So basically, if you don't know Jewish history, uh, they, they, you know, God chose them to communicate his plan through them, and, and he promised them a lot of amazing things. And, but before there were kings, there were times of judges where, where these judges were these people who God spoke to personally and would lead their people. And the people were, dis- were um, really scattered because they were invading armies and invading towns or people groups or tribes that would come and oppress them. And so Jewish people are trying to figure out their ways. They know that God's promised them, but they are, uh, they're, they're being oppressed by, by um, more powerful uh, tribes. And so the story of Gideon is one of those instances where uh, you've got Jewish people who are trying to make it work and trying to figure out life. And you've got the, this one tribe, the Midianites, and they, are, they know that the Jewish people um, are are being successful in certain things, but, but they're more resourceful and more powerful. And so every time they try to get ahead, or they try to have good crops, or they try to make progress, uh, the Midianites come in and just rob them of it. And I don't know if you've ever kind of felt that, like where uh, you're trying to get ahead, but you seem like you can never get ahead. You can, as soon as you get ahead, something comes and just robs you of that. And so, you've, so the Jewish people have, have, um, are, are in that season where they go, I don't even know if it's worth me doing all the work because as soon as I arrive, in a sense, something's going to come and take over. Anybody felt like that before? And so you've got Gideon who feels that, who, who kind of truly illustrates the heart of the Jewish people. And so God speaks to him in a particular uh, context, in a particular day. So let's just jump into Judges uh, 6. We're going to put it on the screen for you over here. So Judges 6, 11 starts off. It says this. It says, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat 
at the great tree at Ophrim, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizar. Now, the, uh, there are a lot of names here. What's, what's the big idea here? The angel of the Lord. So the angel of the Lord is a phrase in the scriptures that is connected to the idea of, of, of an epiphany, but it's also actually called a, a the, theophany, which means that in passages like this, uh, the writer was trying to convey that it was not this big idea revelation. It was as if um, God himself showed up. It's not an angel. It was God manifested in human form. Some people would say this was Jesus showing up in the Old Testament. So all that to say, God came very personal. Not didn't send an angel. It was God's voice. So he, so the, so he continues. It says, Gideon, the guy who's, who we're talking about, the son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the what? Right, so we told you the context, right? Because every time they would get ahead, these guys would come in and steal everything. Now, so the, what's interesting about that, uh, the, that passage, though, let's go back to that passage, is this, where he, he's doing this. So the, he's on the threshing, he's threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press, which you don't necessarily do. It's, the, it's, it's like you do this activity, but you don't do it at, uh, at a wine press. You have a threshing floor, which is actually elevated high. So wheat, when, they, uh, when, they, when, they, um, when they're working on it, they need to go on a higher plane so the wind carries off all the chaff that they've been cleaning out. It's not supposed to be underground, if that makes any sense. So let me show you a picture of a wine press. A wine press looks like this. So a wine press is something that you go underneath. It looks kind of like a pit, doesn't it? It looks kind of like, um, so he's, he's kind of underneath, and why he's doing this? Why is he doing this? So no one can what? No one can see him. So the uh, Midianites don't catch wind of the fact that he is doing this, and they don't steal his crops. But he's doing this. He's doing something that's really interesting, but he's doing it in not an ideal situation. He's doing it to hide from the Midianites, and he is in desperate need. He's kind of like in a pit. Like, just imagine you're in a pit, working, 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 hustling every day, and that's where God comes and sits down and goes, hey, I want to talk to you. And so, let's continue the story. What happens there? The, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, what did he say? Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. That's awesome, right? That's great. Like, when you're hiding from your enemies and trying to do something in secret, what you don't want to hear is, Mighty hero, right? You don't want to hear mighty hero. You don't want to be like, hey, scaredy cat. Like, like that's really the accurate description. But, he's, but God starts off the conversation and says, hey, mighty hero, mighty hero, the, the Lord is with you. Like, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And, 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 and his reaction to that, I think, is classic. What does he say? He says, sir... Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, have you ever done this? Have you ever had this moment? Like, if you're really with me, let me tell you something, you know? Like, if you're really with us, why has all this happened to us? Have you ever been there? Why is this happening to us? And where are the, all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Have you ever had that moment? Like, you, you know, have you ever had a moment where, where you're sitting in, a, in, a, in an environment where, you're, uh, where you hear a faith statement, like, God is with us, and you're like, if God's with me, then why not? Then you, you fill in the blank. You're like, well, but why? You know? I mean, your head is like, so why does my, God loves me, but my life sucks. Okay, let's write that down. Like, what, what does that mean? How does that make sense? So he goes on. He says, didn't they say the Lord uh, brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? He's saying, let me tell you the, let me tell you the, the, the big idea here. The big idea, the, 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 the sentiment that we're all feeling is this. We were promised big. We were promised big. We were promised all these good things from God. And then we were handed over to our enemies. We're handed over to the people who steal from us, who take away from us. We're in a system that doesn't make sense for us. We're in a system where it always continues to rob us from all kinds of things. We are stuck in a dead end. We we'll just keep going and going and going and going and going. I think some of us are there. And then the Lord turned to him and said, go, go with the strength you have, which again is like, ah, uh, the whole problem is that you're not with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's get this. Like, how can we figure this out here? So my strength is like, my strength is I'm in a wine press trying to hide from my enemies 
and you're telling me, go with what? Your strength. That's wonderful. That's just great. Okay? And rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Again, let's just stop right here. First of all, you want me to go in my own strength. That's, that's part of the problem. Okay? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I can't, it's not, it's beyond me. Number two, uh, all of Israel, I'm just trying to get my own stuff together. I mean, by the way, this whole wheat is not for all of Israel. This is for me and my family. Like, I'm, I'm just doing this for me. I, like, I'm in this wine press. I'm making this apple. I'm hustling. I'm going through life because I, I just, honestly, I mean, I've, I mean uh, when, you, when you are down, when you've got stuff going on in your life, when you, there's just so complicated, uh, I'm just not that kind of a person that goes, oh, oh, I am going to think about everybody else. And then God comes and he says, number one, mighty hero. Then he goes, um, um, I'm with you. Then he says, go with your strength, which is kind of implying that God's saying, I'm in you and I want you to go in my strength. And then he says, and I want you to do something um, that's bigger than yourself. I want you to do something that you don't even, are, it's not in your mind. And that is, I want you to and put yourself in a place where you'll rescue not just your family, but you'll rescue all of what? Israel. I mean, God always calls us up, and he call, always calls us out, right? He calls us out of darkness, out of our selfishness, out of our self-seeking, out of our, all the things that we, that, that uh, disappointment, out of all the funk. And he calls us up, up to, um, you know, up to a higher level, up to a deeper level. Uh, broader perspective, uh, he just calls us up. He calls us up. And see, it's, 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 it's moments like this where you just got to stop and go, God, when I'm trying to figure out my life, if, as I'm trying to figure out just goals, and some of our goals are just practical goals, if we're trying to, I'm just trying, trying to get ahead. I'm physically, I'm just trying to turn the corner here. I, I mean, emotionally, I'm just trying to get better. I'm, spiritually, I just, I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to do this. I'm trying to get ahead. And God says, hey, mighty hero. Not me. You're not talking to me. He says, no, 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 mighty hero, I want you to do something that's even bigger than you think it is. Or bigger than it is. What, what, what do we do? What do we, what do, we do? And then he says, but Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? He's like, I can't, how can I do this? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. I'm the least in my entire family. He's like, listen, how can I do this? And he lists out all the things that he cannot do and the reasons why he can't do it. And so what I want to do is just stop right here and go, okay, what, what is God saying? And do you identify with this? Do you, do you kind of go, I, I get this. I, I, I understand it. What is God trying to say here? Now, I wish we had time today to talk about the rest of his story. We'll get into that next week. But here, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from what God is saying and what is God saying to us and what is he saying to you in your situation and what do you need to reclaim? Because here for Gideon, he's saying, hey, there are promises, there are dreams, there are visions, there are goals, there are things, that there, there's a faith that you need to reclaim. I want you to go back. I want you to take back the authority, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the promises that I have. I want you to take back the, the, uh, the territory. I want you to take back. I want you to rescue. I want you to bring back the people of Israel to a faith that, was, that they once had. What will it take us to move in that direction? What would it take you? And so I've got a couple of questions here. I've got a couple of things that we have to kind of think through. Number one is this. Number one we have to look through is, a, is, is this question. Is what is our, what is our wheat I know it sounds like, oh, what do you mean? So, so, so Gideon was threshing wheat, so he was doing the thing he needed to do. So I put down some notes of, of like, w you know, what does that even look like? What does that mean for us? And for us, for some of us, the wheat is the stuff that we just have, have to do. We, 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 we must do. It's the process. It's the day-to-day. -day. It's the thing that we are disengaging ourselves from. It's the th th thing that we go, I cannot, I don't understand um, how this is going to pay off, but, but, but you've also stopped doing the most important thing. You've stopped trusting the process because the process will eventually pay off. It's the one thing you have to do to get to where you want to go. Because for some of us, our wheat, 
Our wheat is the must to. It's the, the thing we have to do. It's the paycheck. It's the, it's the things we have to show up for, in a sense. But they don't give us all kinds of pay that, uh, uh, payoff, as in it's not the thing you want to do in life. It's not the job you want to have. It's not the, 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 the quality of life, but you have to do it. What is your wheat, and what are you doing with it? What is it? What is the thing that you must do to sustain yourself? It is the must do spiritually. It's the must do um, uh, uh, discipline that you have to have. It is the thing you have to work on. It's, it, it will sustain you. It's, I'm not saying it's going to satisfy. I'm not going to say it's going to rescue Israel. I'm not, it's, but it's the wheat. What is your wheat? What does it look like? What, is it, what, what does it mean? And uh, uh, what, what do you have to do? And the second question is this, what is your what? Wine press. What is your wine press? What is that hole? What is that, 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 uh, that, that not so great condition that you're in? What, what, is that, what is that space that you're like, I don't want to do any good work here because this place is not great. This place is not ideal. It's kind of like the pit. It's, kinda, it's, it's the pits and it's the pit. It's like, I, I don't want to do this. And for some of us, we're in this pit. We're in this. The only option is, is for us to do the work that must be done in our wine press. And for us, it's the, un, uh, it's the, uh, you know, the insane boss. It's the, it's the crazy family. It's the, uh, it's the uncontrollable environment. It's the, it's the company that doesn't make any sense and their policies are ridiculous. It's the job you don't want to have. It's, the, it's, it's the, the sickness that has come about in the midst of you trying to do something good. It's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's like all of a sudden you're, you're, you're in a pit. All of a sudden you're in that wine press. All of a sudden it's the one place that you're like, are you kidding me right now? And for some of you it's financial. It's like a, it's, it's a debt it's, it's, it's like, and, and that's, the, that's the worst, isn't it? And when you're in this financial debt and crawling out of it is like the hardest thing to do. And what do we do? What do we do? We, we stop doing some things. We get critical. We complain. We, we, we have all the emotions, right? I, I mean, I do because it's like, ah, I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this, this debt. And we stop doing the things we have to do. We should do. Generosity goes out the window. Giving to organizations, giving to the church goes out the window. I mean, when we're stuck in a wine for us and you got a week there, you're going, this is not even an ideal situation. I mean, I wish I could tell you, I mean, I, I don't even know the details of how you, they thresh wheat, but all I know is, is that is not the best place to do it. You need an open environment. And for some of us, we are not reclaiming the mission, the visions, the goals, the small things and the big things in our life is because we're stuck in a wine press and we're like, but this is not an ideal situation. When I get there, I will do this. Have you ever heard that? One of these days, I'm going to do that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm waiting for the best timing. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. The problem is, is that when you're in a pit, waiting doesn't help you crawl out. You know what does? Climbing. Write that down. Someone write that down. That's brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Climbing, not complaining. Talking about it doesn't do jack. It's the climb. And for some of you, you're like, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but if, 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 if God's with me, I just, I just want, I, I just want to see God move in my life. Have you ever heard, said that before? Let me give you something. Let me give you a truth, okay? If you want to see God move, then move. Move. What do you mean? Move. Not move your mouth. Move. Do something. You want to see him move. People who stand still rarely see God. Because you know what? God's always going. He's always going. So you have to move. What does that mean? What is, what is your wine press? What is your wine press? Number third. The third is what is your strength you have? Which was a great question that God asked Gideon. What is the strength you have? And you're like, oh, I don't have any strengths. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You have you advantages and you have disadvantages. You have skills. You have talents. You have a strength in you. And for some of you, you're like, no, 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 no. God needs to give me all the strength. No, number one, God's in you. But number two, what is the strength you have? You cannot deny it. I know 
It's, 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 it's a wheat, that it's, it's, it's the stuff that I don't even want to do, but I got to do. It's the place, it's not ideal, it's a wine press, I get that. But you have a strength, you have, you, you have a talent, you have a mindset, you have a will, you have a confidence, you have a tenacity, that you have a passion within you. You have to, and I have to move in that. You cannot, you cannot forfeit this fight. You cannot say, well, well I'm going to wait for God. No, 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 no. God's in you. No, 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 that's, that's it. But he's given you empathy. No one cares like you care. No one feels like you feel. No one sees like you see. You have thoughts and ideas. No one organizes like you organize. No one leads like you lead. You have a what? Say it with me. You have a what? You have a what? You have a strength. Okay, let's say it with a little bit of strength. Okay? Okay, let's do this. Metro, you have a what? Yes, you have a strength. You have a power. You have an oomph. You have something. And I get it. Disappointment just takes the wind out of you. I get that. But but he says, I want you to go in your confidence. I want you to go in your caring. I want you to go in your humility. I want you to go. All of these are strengths. Go in your strengths. What are your strengths? I, I, I read this. This is pretty interesting. Uh, Dory Clark, she is a uh, author of a book called uh, Reinventing You. And she talks about this idea of... Um, of disadvantages. And she says this. She says, when you're trying to understand your unique ability, it helps to think about scarcity. When you're thinking about your unique ability, he says, he, she says, it helps to think about scarcity. The, the what background or skills do you have that might be rare in a given context? And she tells a story about a person who was applying for a nonprofit job, and um, this person did not have any, uh, did not have a lot of uh, background with the, the cause of this nonprofit, nor all the things about the cause. Even he wasn't really, like super, like this is the cause of his life, and so he wanted to be the director of this nonprofit. That he 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 he, he believed in the cause, but he was not an avid like he would lived and breathed it. But he was applying for this job as the director. And when, they, when he, he, he got the job, not because he knew everything about this cause, but because he cared about the city, he knew city officials, and he knew how to have policies in place and make a difference. And so he became the director of it, and they hired him. He had, he had no idea about the depth of the cause and what it means like and all that. No, he had skills and abilities that complemented it. See, for some of us, you're going, but I don't have the strength to do this. Yeah, I know, I get that. But what is that unique ability you have in the context that you're in right now, in the job that you're in right now? That's what you need to understand. That is your unique ability. That is your new, unique strength. Let me, give you, uh, let me give you the fourth one. What is your big, the, your, your big, your bigger purpose at stake? What is your bigger purpose at stake? Now, for the, for, for, uh, Gideon, it was uh, Israel. It was his whole people. God says, I want to I wanna take you and show you that you could not just rescue your family and rescue your heart on, uh, from this. You could rescue a whole, gener- whole nation and generations to come. You can make a difference. You can, you can truly make a difference. He says, there's a bigger thing at play here, and there's a big, higher stake. What is yours? What is ours? You see, if it comes down to, I want to provide for my family, that's great. I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. But could it be more than that? Could it be more than that? I don't want to provide for my kids. I want to provide for my, for my grandkids. I want to leave a legacy for my grandkids. Okay, that's, that's bigger, isn't it? it it's, 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 more, it's thinking, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, it's not just the context I'm in right now. There's something bigger. And so often, if you and I lose the reason why we do what we do, the big idea, man, we lose it all. And that's why at Mosaic, we, we're convinced that we are here for a bigger purpose, not to just provide a church, but we're here, truly here, to reclaim the message and the movement of Jesus. It's bigger for us. It's a bigger deal. It's, 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 it's out there. It's a bigger purpose. And the reason is, is because one of these, one, uh, one po- at some point, Mosaic in this context is not going to exist, and it does not matter. What matters is this, is that we leave the church better for the next generation. So we want to reclaim this message and the movement of Jesus. 
And God is with us on this. And that's why when God says, I want you to go bigger, he reminds us of some, some things. Um, there are a couple of passages in Zechariah. He's reminding his people through a prophet. The first one is this. He says, not by might nor by power, but by my, what? But my spirit says the Lord. He says, uh, he says let me just counter, uh, counter speak into this strength. It is, it is, it is, is not, it's not solely rests on you and your power, but it is, it is by my spirit. There is a power in my presence that can, that it, it's the one thing that will heal everything. It's the one thing that is so potent. And, and let me tell you, I'm with you on this. He gives him a promise in, in another passage as well. He says this, he says this, he says, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work, what? begin. I mean, there's so much truth in this. What does he say? He says, hey, when I, when I present this to you, when I say there's something bigger at play, I want to remind you of my strength, but I also want to remind you that do not despise. Do not think, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is so small. This, th- th- this is not going to get any bigger. Do not despise small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. And this part is so profound. Why? Because it says the work what? Begin. And see, that's where reclaiming shows up. For some of us, we've stopped. And so you don't, you don't begin. You just stop. And the work to pursue some things that God's put in your heart and it might be trivial to other people, it doesn't matter, but it's true to you. Those things have stopped. And God says, hey, hey, they've stopped because you think they're so minute. You think they're so small. And because of that, you don't do them. You don't do them. But we know this, right? We, we, we know this. Every big thing out there has it had a small beginning. Everything, everything. The first few disciples, 11 of them, and then it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. If Jesus would have been on the cross, if you know the story, he's there. Who, who else is there? All his disciples? No. He dies seeing his mom and John just at, at his funeral, at his death, and that's it. It seems like looking, oh, everybody looking in, they go, wow. No one even showed up to that. That didn't amount to anything. That is a very humble death, tragic death, but led, led to something big. Here's the question. What is, the, what is that small thing you and I need to do, pursue? Because there's a bigger purpose. There's a much bigger purpose. Um, recently, I was, uh, I was, uh, was kind of involved. I was... I was uh, kind of busy doing, just doing a lot of things and, and um, engaged in, in uh, I just, you know, just focusing on my stuff and thinking about some things. And I was in a context where uh, I can't give you a lot of details, but basically um, this guy comes up to me and I know him and he works, he's a social worker and he comes up to me and, uh, um, and he goes, uh, and he, j- he says, hey man, I, I just, I just, I just can I just talk to you for a second? And we don't really talk. He knows I'm a pastor. And uh, he goes, man, what, let me just, can, can I just say, and he goes, man, what the, f-? and he just, he just throws a lot of F words out there and a lot of stuff. And I'm like, okay, okay. And he's just, he's like, man, I just need to, I just need to, man, I just, and he's just saying things and, and, and I was like, oh, let's, let's go take a walk. And, uh, and there was a lot of emotions a lot of emotions. The big idea there was like, hey, I bust my butt. I do all this work. I do all this work to help people and, and, and help kids in the, you know, in, the, in the nonprofit that he works at. He says, I do all this work. And there are just days that I just go, is it even worth anything? Because I see people, families abusing, sexually abusing their own kids. And I'm just done, man. I just don't even know. And he was so emotional, and this guy's not. He's like, dude, I'm sorry. And it was a a very 
interesting conversation because he was like, there was a lot of apologies and a lot of F words and there's a lot of apologies and there's a lot, it was just back and forth and he was like, I was like, bro, I get it. He was like, dude, what is, is it he, I, I just want to quit this thing. I just want to quit this thing. And I didn't know what to say. I was like, uh, what do you do? Yeah, because in light of the world we live in, it's tough. And I just felt that I, I said, hey man, but I'll tell you what, I know you do all this work, but is there one story this year that you're proud of? One kid you saved, one family you restored. And he goes, yeah, there's one. I said, well, you do it for the one. We just do it for the one, man. And the truth is, guys, church work is the same. There's a lot of people, a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things happening. But if it comes down to it, we just do it for the one. And I don't know what your one is. Because you go, ah, but I'm doing all these things. I'm doing all these things. What is that one story? What is that one thing that it's all worth it? Maybe it's the little one in your life, you know? Maybe it's a loved one in your life. Who are you doing it for? The big question is, what is that big, what is, what's at stake here? What do you need to reclaim? What do you need to do to make that happen? Or are you and I going to be focused on, ah, but is it even worth it? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah, 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 yeah I get it, I get it. But you start small. What's the next small thing you got to do that could turn into a big thing? And, and get, by the way, it doesn't even need to turn into a big thing. It just needs to be a big thing for you. And what's at stake? What's at stake? So let me pray with you. Can I do that? Let's stand together. So, as we just think about this, as we uh, pray about what God is saying to us at, at Metro, I want to encourage you. Why are you there? What is God saying to you right there in that context? Live stream. I mean, you're watching this. Why? What is God saying? And you're here this morning. Why? I know why. Because there's a voice inside of you that's louder than my voice right now that's calling you up. It's calling you to reclaim the things that you have let go of. So let's reclaim this together. Let me pray for us. Lord God, I thank you so much for who you are. I pray you give us the courage to come in your presence and know that you speak to us, know that you're in us, know that you've given us unique strengths, know that you are calling us to a bigger life than we have allowed ourselves to live. And for some of us, we are in the pit, we're in this wine press, we're in this place that's not ideal, at, but it's real. It's real. And so are you. You are real. And your presence is real and your power is real. I pray, God, you give us the ability to move in that direction, to move in the direction of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.